In this video, I'm gonna give you five ways to level up your Betfair trading skills right now. So by the end of this video, you are gonna have five things to do to be able to get better trading on Betfair. My name is Ryan Carruthers, if you don't know me from the Betfair trading community, and if you are new here, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and hit that little bell. I don't know which way it is, that way or that way, so that you never ever miss one of our videos. Just a heads up, if you do join our email list, I will email you a fair few times, but I will send you a link to these videos as well. So these are things that are really, really gonna help you when it comes to Betfair. They're gonna help you level up. They're not that painful. They do require a little bit of work though. So I'm gonna start off with the first one and it is to watch the market and the event. So what I mean by this is, I mean to have the event on. So if you're watching a football match, have the event on your TV and then have the market live on your phone, have it on an iPad just or on a computer just have it side by side so that you can see what is happening in the event and the market. This is one of the things that I've been telling traders to do for years and it's one of the things that can really, really help your trading quite quickly because you're gonna see what's gonna happen to the prices when things in the match happen. So for example, you might see a goal go in and then you'll know what happens to the price. Now, if you jot these things down, just what you're looking at, you know, the under 2.5 goals, if that's the market you're looking at, unders and overs, the match odds like home, draw and away, just jot these down at the start of the match in a notebook or whatever, and then you can just go into it. When a goal happens, jot down what happens. Doing this for a couple of weeks will give you so much more information on the market and you'll actually spot a lot of things that happen. Okay, so that's the first one. Moving on to the second one, pick a part of a people's strategies and think what do you like about them and what would you do differently? One of the things that you should do is pick apart people's strategies. Success leaves clues. So if people are sharing successful strategies, pick them apart. How are they finding the games the, or the person to trade? What are they doing to find them? Why are they doing it that way? Why are they entering at that? Why would you not enter at that? Does this fit your trading personality? All of those things will give you really, really good indicators and help on how to build your own strategy. You might find that just tweaking somebody else's strategy works really, really well for you and they've done a lot of the hard work. There's a couple of members inside of BTC, Betfair Trading Community, who have taken my split stake strategy to a whole new level because they've done this. They've picked apart my strategy and looked at it with fresh eyes, different angles and with the way that they wanna trade and they've made it work even more for them. So it's really, really cool. Now the third one is track more around the strategy. This is one that I don't see people doing enough of. And what I mean by this is, so many people will come to me and go, oh, I'm trading the over 2.5 goals, this is my data, and it will just literally be the entry and exit point. That's it. And they've gone to like quite a lot of pain to track that. Sometimes they have three or four months worth of data, and that pains me because all you needed to do is just add a couple more columns to that spreadsheet, and that failed strategy could be a really, really, really profitable one. So. I use this example a lot on the channel about my failed over 2.5 goal strategy. I was tracking the half-time score and the full-time score and I noticed a massive difference between them that it didn't, the half-time score and the full-time score very rarely stayed the same. Other members have noticed this as well by tracking the first goal time and the second goal time and the third goal time with their strategy and they've seen some big gaps between that. So they've then actually been able to go, oh, okay, my initial strategy doesn't work, but these games that I thought were high scoring only actually have one goal in. So what they've then been doing is backing different things or laying different things in line with that, okay? So whatever your idea of your strategy is, think about what else you can track that goes alongside that. So if you're looking for goals, what happens, what's the first goal time, what's the second goal time, the first half, third, third goal time? What half has the most goals in? What happens after a goal has been scored? Is there another one? Another one of my members also spotted that if a goal has been scored within the first 15 minutes of a game, there is a 90% chance of another goal being scored. And then they could even tell me that that goal comes after 60 minutes. So all they started doing then was waiting till 60 minutes and backing the over 1.5 goals and leaving it. 
Really, really straightforward. Number four kind of links on to that and it's to keep better records. So you need to keep better records of your trades. So many traders don't even record their trades and it just baffles me. Some say that they don't have a spreadsheet but I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve that one right now. If you comment the word spreadsheet below, I will give you a profit and loss template that you can use. Please do make sure though you click file, make a copy. Don't request edit access because I won't give you it because you'll then edit the master copy. So click file, make a copy, okay? Keep better records, record your trades and just very, very simply just record things like the type of trade it is. So are you doing an over 2.5 goals trade? Yeah, okay, we'll put over 2.5 goals. What I see so many people doing is putting all of their results onto one sheet and then just not having that column that tells them the type of trade they're doing. So they go, oh, I don't know whether that was a lay the draw iron or a 2.5 goals trade, and then they're proper screwed. Okay, doing that also allows you then to look back over your data and then get the most out of your strategy because you've got the data on it. It also allows you to start modeling out what would happen if you increase the stakes, etc., etc. Okay, now the last one, number five, is to ask for help. It's a really, really straightforward one. There's loads of ways now for asking for help. You can comment on people's YouTube channels, you can email people, you can tweet people, you can join a community like mine or others. They are available. Ask for help. If you are stuck, ask for help. Okay, we live in a world now where there's so much information and there's so many people wanting to help that if you do connect with someone from a video or whatever you like their style, ask them for help. It's really, really straightforward. It's what we've built Better Fair Trading Community on. For many, many years, we just had an email, the email sequence is like, whatever you're stuck with, let us know and we will reply to you. And we did reply to those emails. That's now got quite a lot of people doing it. So we now do an Ask Me Anything podcast where we actually show people the put their questions in and we just show them, tell them how to solve their problem. Check that out if you are struggling with something. I will leave a link to that below as well. And that's it, there's five ways. If you do those things, you will instantly get better at trading. You'll be able to get better within three weeks. It's that simple. It comes to the point in the video where I give you a word to comment, you comment that, it lets me know that you got to this video. It builds this really nice sense of community as well. I really, really like this. One of the other things that it does though, is it tells me who's watching. So we can connect and you know, I can see you, I click on your profile so I'm not just staring at this camera, talking to a camera. Now today's word is hat. The reason it is hat is because I had three, three of these limited edition babies made, one for me, one for Martin and one for Adam. I went to send Adam's to him and it got stolen in the post. So if someone out there has got one of these, then that is a stolen hat. So we're gonna comment the word hat today and then that will let me know that you've been watching this video. Thank you very much. And if you do have Adam's hat, please send it back to us.